remind ourselves of what we're, we're looking at. So let me read, starting in verse 12, Philippians chapter 2, verse 12, and I'll read down through verse 16. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Do all things without murmurings and disputings, that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world, holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. So we'll stop there. Now, this is our theme for the year. Uh, the opposite, you might say, is in verse 21. For all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ. That's the way we don't want to be. Uh, we want to hold forth the word of life. We want to be lit up for Christ and, and reaching people for Him. That's what we're talking about. And you know, he, he starts this passage, verse 12 there, with the, the thought, work out your own salvation. Now some people take that and they think, oh, it means I need to work for my salvation. This is talking about assurance. Uh, if, when you're saved, God is the one who works salvation in, all right? He'll work it into you. You just trust Him. Uh, God will, will give you salvation freely and eternally. Now, the Bible says in 1 John chapter 5, These things I have written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. We can know. Now, Philippians 1.6, just across the page there, Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. If you're saved, if you've trusted Christ as Savior, listen, God says no one can pluck you out of His hand. Uh, assurance of salvation is so important. If you don't have the assurance that you're saved, you'll never be a soul winner. Yeah, just mark it down. If you're not sure about your own salvation, you're not going to share it with others. And when he talks there about working out your own salvation, he's talking about carrying it to its logical conclusion. And that logical conclusion is, to be like Jesus, Christ-likeness. Now, God is working that in you, uh, but you need to cooperate with Him. Uh, in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 14, the Bible says, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. That high calling, to be like Jesus, like our big brother. Uh, verse 21, the, the Bible says that God is going to change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto His glorious body according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. God can help us. Uh, work out your own salvation. Uh, cooperate with God. Do what he's wanting to do already in you. That's assurance. Then in verse 13 he says, For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Uh, an action word there is a very small word. It's only two letters. <laughs> do. God wants us to do something. You know, later on in, in this same book, he says uh, in verse 9 of chapter 4, those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Uh, there needs to be some action in, in our Christian life. Uh, God wants to do a work in you. God wants to do a work through you. Uh, do His good pleasure. Don't resist the work of the Lord in you. Some years ago, we had a, a fellow come into church. He, he was a little bit different. And I remember one day he said, uh, you know, this week I was really tempted to read my Bible. <laughs> but he resisted it. <laughs> he resisted that temptation. Uh, no, we need to do God's good pleasure. You know, when God's working in us, do what he leads you to do. Especially as you see it in, in God's word, you know that's, that's true. Uh, we need to understand that God is not only working in us, he works through us. Uh, we need to have an action and we need to, in verse 14, to have an, an attitude, a good attitude. Do all things without murmurings and disputings. I've found over the years, people respond as much to our attitude as to our words. You ever notice that? You can, you can say the right words, but if you've got a stinking attitude, man, it, it's hard to get people to cooperate. Uh, people respond to our attitude. And God tells us not to be murmurers or complainers. We should be an illustration to people of the fruit of the Spirit. Really. And, and I say that as a man who often falls short of that, but you know, that's, that's working out our salvation. Being like Jesus. Letting the, the fruit of the Spirit show, shine through us. 
Uh, this morning, the message was godliness with contentment is great gain. And that's what we're talking about here. We need to have a, a right attitude, an attitude of godliness, an attitude of contentment. Uh, that's what people need to see in us. We need to be a, a, a light shining in a dark world. And, and that's the purpose there in, in verse 15. Yeah, he starts off kind of negative. He says that you may be blameless and harmless. You know, the problem with a light is when you get junk in the way. You can have a real bright light, but if you cover it up, you get dirt on it, it's not going to have the effect that it should. And uh, we don't want to let uh, the sin of the world come between us and shining for the Lord. Uh, he uses the word there, blameless, and it, he, he repeats it really when he says, without rebuke. Uh, we don't want the Lord to have to be rebuking us. Uh, we want the Lord to be able to be blessing us. And uh, we need to, sh to uh, let to let our light shine. You know, Jesus said in Matthew 5, 16, uh, Let your light so shine bef before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. You know, letting our light shine. Not, uh, not uh, being rebuked. A and he says being harmless as well. Now, put it this way. Is it harmless to withhold life from someone? If you have what somebody needs and you withhold it, is, is really, is that harmless? Uh, what's that word they, they're using all, these time, all the time about uh, care? Um, duty of care. Listen, as Christians, we have a duty of care. Amen. We have the life. We have the light. Don't put it under a bushel. Don't hide it. Don't, don't cover it with, you know, ruined life. Uh, get it out. Let it shine. We're to be, and really the word that it comes down to for me is, we're to be different. It's nice to be the same sometimes. <laughs> um, I probably shared this illustration before, but you may not know this, but I'm not originally from Australia. <laughs> you, you probably didn't know that. And when I talk to people, I often get asked, oh, where are you from? You know what? I get kind of tired of that <laughs> sometimes. But you know what? When... When I get to America, people don't ask me that, usually. It's kind of funny because we'll, we'll go to America and I'll hear somebody talk and I'll think, oh, they're American. And I'll think, oh, they're all Americans. <laughs> I'm not used to hearing them. Well, let me make an application. You know, here on this planet, we're not of this world. And people often will, will look at you and think, oh, they're, they're not the same. They're different. Where are you from? Oh, I'm from heaven. You know what? Someday you're going to be in heaven. And you're going to walk around and everybody's going to be praising the Lord. Everybody's going to be right with God. You're going to, you're going to be like me. You're going to think, oh, maybe they're a Christian. Oh, they're all Christians. <laughs> <laughs> and what a blessing that'll be. Uh, now we're different. But we're not, we don't want to be different than the Lord. That's the key. If you're going to be different, be like the Lord. And, and then someday in heaven you'll be the same. <laughs> I don't know if that all makes sense, but it does. Uh, we need to be willing to be different. We need to be willing to be like the Lord. That's the only way we can shine as lights. He says here, we live in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation. Man, you know, we're patriotic and we, we love Australia and we, you know, we, there's a lot of things that we love about the things that we do, but uh, let's be honest, we live in the middle of a crooked and perverse nation. Uh, it, it's just a common thing for people. Uh, people are dishonest. People are sinners. And we need to shine as lights. We need to let people see the, the light of the Lord. Are you willing to be different? That, that's really what God calls you to. He said, follow me. Follow me. Holding forth the word of life. In verse 16, holding forth the word of life that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I've not run in vain, neither labored in vain. I haven't heard the phrase so much lately, but used to hear of a thing they call lifestyle evangelism. You ever hear of that? Lifestyle evangelism. What they were talking about was just living like the Lord, and, and then people just see that, and they'd kind of be attracted to the Lord. Well, that's a good thing. That's, we should live. You know, we should uh, be like the Lord Jesus Christ. But, you know, it's not enough. We also need to speak the word of the Lord. Now, sometimes we can do that with a, a pamphlet. Um, I try to make a practice to have one in my wallet. Of course, Every once in a while, I go to grab one and it's not there, but 
You know, I try to keep a church track in, in my wallet because sometimes I don't have time to, you know, they don't have time. They're working or whatever. I can't, you know, take 10 minutes or whatever. Uh, but we need to be speaking the word of the Lord. There's other times when, when we need to just talk to people about the Lord, uh, presenting God's word. You know, the Bible tells us to pray for each other, to be bold. Uh, I don't know how it is for you. Evidently, it was a problem for the Apostle Paul. You wouldn't think that, would you? You think, oh, he's, he's an evangelist. You know, he knows how to be bold. But in Ephesians, one page back in my Bible, Ephesians chapter 5, or I'm sorry, chapter 6, and verse 19, verse 18, he's talking about praying, and he says, and for me, verse 19, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds. That was his job. That's what he did. <laughs> that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. He said, pray for me. Uh, listen, you, know, you look at some people and think, oh, they're bold. Well, listen, they, they need you to pray for them. You look at others and you, maybe you think of yourself. You think, oh, I'm shy. You know, I'm, I'm not used to I'm not bold. We need to pray for each other. We can have the boldness that, that we should have. Uh, someone has said, you know, sometimes we say silence is golden. Sometimes it's just yellow. <laughs> uh, we need to be careful. We're not... We're not uh, withholding what people need to hear. Now pray for each other. In, in Colossians chapter 4 and verse 2, continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving, with all praying also for us, that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bonds, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. Man, we need to take that to heart, don't we? Now we need to be talking to people about the Lord. We need to be presenting. We need to be holding forth uh, the word of life. We need to pray for each other to be bold, but you know, we also need to be bold ourselves. In Acts chapter 4 and, and verse 13, it's a situation where actually they'd been, I don't know if they were actually arrested or not, but they appeared before the, the rulers. And uh, in appearing before the rulers, basically they gave their testimony. They kind of gave a mini sermon. Uh, Peter, I think it was. It's when he says, neither is there salvation in any other. You know, he's saying, by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, even by him does this man stand here before you whole. They'd healed a man, and he said, it's by the power of Jesus. There's only salvation in Jesus' name. Well, then the Bible says in Acts 4.13, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled. They took knowledge of them that they'd been with Jesus. That's what we want. We want people to see we've been with Jesus. You know, we don't want them to just think, oh, he's having a bad day, you know, something like that. We want them to, to, to see there's somebody who's, who's different. There's somebody who, maybe they won't even know what the difference is, but they need to be seeing the light of the Lord, holding forth uh, the word of life. And, and he says there in Philippians chapter 2 that the goal is that I may rejoice in the day of Christ. See, someday we're going to stand before the Lord. You know, some things are too late. Uh, there's, there's people we should have witnessed to, and chance is gone. But uh, you know, hopefully there will be others that will we'll take the chance that God gives us. You know, I have folks that come to mind when I think, yeah, should have witnessed. God gives you, you know, it, it doesn't always, it's not always something you plan. Sometimes it's just... Flat out, somebody will just give you an opportunity. Man, grab it with both hands. You, you can let him go. Just let him go. He's all right. Don't keep him here against his will. All right? Oh, okay. Our, our goal is to rejoice in, in the day of Christ. Uh, you know, what a day it's going to be when we, when we stand with the Lord. And what a blessing it will be to have... Those who are, who are there because we shared the gospel, maybe had a part in it. The Bible talks about some, some sow and some water, and you know, you know, there's, there's different parts to it. We need to do our part, do what God, take the opportunities that God gives us. Now, I just wanted to share maybe a couple of practical things tonight. I didn't, uh, uh, didn't think it would be a very long message tonight, but um, I want to encourage you to, to think about just some practical things you can do in, in sharing Christ with folks. Uh, I mentioned one already. Just in inviting people to church. You'd be surprised how every once in a while somebody would say, yeah, I'll come. Yeah, I used to go to church. Or, 
you know, there's a lot of people who went to RE, you know, and, or went to church as a kid, and, and they, in the back of their mind, they've, they've always said, yeah, I need to get back to that. I meet people like that all the time, door knocking. Yeah, we used to go to whatever. Maybe we'll come. And you, you can follow up on that. Invite people to church. Like I said, keep a, a church tract handy, or a tract. Uh, I, I find these are, these are good. It just says, you know, it invites them along. It has a phone number and an address and has a, a, a testimony. But as well, talk to people about the Lord. Now, I, I'm not great at this. You'd think, it, you know, here I am, a pastor. And, uh, he, surely pastors know everything about, about the Bible and what to do, but uh, I'm not real good at starting a conversation about the Lord. Uh, how, how do you do it? How do you start a conversation? Like, talk to me here. Now, what is, what's something you say? Alice? Yeah. So you talk about what you do on the weekend? Absolutely. Yeah, people are always asking you about the weekend, don't they? What are you doing this weekend? Fancy you ask. <laughs> what are some others? What, what are, is there a phrase you use, a way that you uh, get to talk to people about the Lord? Sorry to spring this on you. I always used to talk to the dead. Say again? When are you going to die? Okay. <laughs> That's a real mild, gentle way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, at the back. I, I quite often tell people if they come to me and they're whinging about something, I just say, have you thought about prayer? Yeah. And then it just sort of flows. Goes from there. Yeah. Brett? The natural thing I always found is I, get, I tell them when I found Christ, because they can't deny what I yeah. experienced. Yeah. Yeah. And I just share my testimony. Uh, all the Lord said That's a good thing. Those things, it's kind of rude to interrupt you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the Bible talks, you know, Paul often would share his testimony when he was in a situation. Just, just in, a, in a few words, in a few minutes, he would share, you know, how, what he was, how the Lord changed him, and what, the difference, what, what a difference it made. There's, there's a lot of things you can think about, and God can help you to, to talk to folks, but we have to determine that we'll do it. We'll be willing. A any others before we, we move on? The other thing I would suggest is plan to use your home for the Lord. You know, most of us live somewhere. And, uh, you know, we need to be careful that we're not just having a home for, well, we need to, to practice hospitality. And uh, be careful. He uses a phrase here in, in verse 16, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. You know, we get so busy. There's so many things we do. Uh, sometimes we need to clear some things off our schedule so that we can, we can serve the Lord, so we can use our home for the Lord. I, I know, I mean, we, we get busy, everybody gets busy. Sometimes you feel like you, you're frazzled, you know, but uh, there's times when we can set things aside and, and we can, uh, we can uh, show hospitality. Uh, I've found in Australia, in anywhere in the world, that's one of the best ways to, to talk to people. Just be hospitable, just be kind. Uh, like we talked about praying. You know, God does answer prayer. Don't minimize, minimize the power of prayer. Uh, I had been asking folks, and I've been giving out little lists uh, with numbers 1 through 10 on them, <laughs> and just asking folks to start writing down people that they could pray for to be saved. Now, this is my list. I, I don't have 1 through 10. I've got more than that. But you know, as, as God puts people in your life, you just write down their name. You begin to pray for them. And you begin, and when I say pray for them, I mean pray for them and pray that God would give you an opportunity to witness to them. Don't just pray for, you know, for something to happen. Pray that God would use you. And, and begin to make a plan to speak to them about the Lord. See what God would do. Pray for specific lost souls. Pray for other soul winners. You know, oftentimes when we get together, we'll say, you know, I'm, I'm hoping to reach my family or this person or that person. And, uh, you know, like, we, like we said, pray for each other. Um, you're trying to reach people, holding forth the word of life. It's not enough just to know that we should. It's not enough just to even have an intention to do it. We need to really do it. We need to live the Christian life, but we also need to speak the words of life. Now, I struggle with that. I know you do too. Uh, but we need to keep praying, we need to keep planning, we need to keep asking God to, 
to use us. God can give us opportunities to lead people to Christ. Now, what a blessing it'll be to, to stand in heaven with someone who says, I'm here because he told me. <clears throat> there, I, I'll be there because someone told my parents, and my parents told me. And what a blessing it is to hold forth the word of life. Um, I, any other comments or, or suggestions? You know, we, we need all the help we can get. I, I'd encourage you to get somebody to witness with sometimes. You know, it, you don't necessarily have to even go together, but just encourage each other and be praying uh, for the same people. That was one of the reasons I wanted you to write them down on a list. That way you can share them with folks. When we have prayer meeting, when you get together with someone, listen, I'm praying for this person. I'm hoping to witness to him this week. I heard of a pastor. I, I think I've got this story right. It was true. He decided he wanted to witness to a certain, certain man, and he decided that he would not eat until he'd witnessed to them. Well, he went to, to talk to the man, and he had gone away for three days. And he decided, no, I've, I've gone before the Lord, and he, he fasted for those three days. And then when the guy got back, something else happened. He didn't eat for several weeks, but he got to witness to that man. He just determined that was important. Now, you may not want to go to that, that extreme in, in that sense, but listen, we do need to fast and pray. We do need to have a concern for people. It's the most important thing in any person's life is their relationship with the Lord. Uh, you can know. Uh, you need to have that assurance that you're saved. Work out your own salvation. Uh, do His good pleasure. Don't complain. Shine as lights. Hold forth the word, the word of life. Because someday we're going to want to rejoice uh, in the day of Christ. Uh, I've given you a song there. Now, Doyle, I hope you know that song. Lord, lay some soul upon my heart. Uh, hopefully we have copies out there. You, you want a copy? You? Emily, just give, give Mrs. Brown one here. Yeah. I'd like